Right, binomial theorem. We're going to have a look at doing these expansions. We're starting with a plus b and we're increasing the power that we're multiplying up by. Um, I'm starting with the 1 so it helps us to see the whole pattern, but of course that just expands to a plus b. Now if we do a plus b squared you should easily be able to do that expansion, it's just a quadratic, so it's a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. Um, adding um, in another one going up to the cubed, so we've got to multiply the previous line by another a plus b. It gets a little trickier but you should still be able to do that and it simplifies to this line. And then to the power of 4 um, gets a bit tedious by this point, that uh, expands to this. Now that should be enough to help us to spot the patterns here. So first of all let's have a look at the first term, the a, and what's happening there. So if we look at that fourth line where we're doing to the power of 4, a starts at the power of 4 and then reduces by a power each time, even down to a to the 0 at the end, which we wouldn't bother writing because that's just a 1, anything to the power of 0 is 1. The b's they go in reverse. So the second term um, goes up in powers starting with uh, the power of 0, but again we don't write that one because that's just a 1. Okay, so that helps us with the a, the powers of a and b, or the powers of the first and second term, but what about those coefficients? Here we have uh, 1, 4, 6, 4, 1. How do we get those easily? What's the pattern that's happening here? Now if we look at the previous lines, that helps us to see the pattern a little better. Um, but it's easier actually if you write them out like this. So here's the coefficients. This here, you add up those two, the two terms above to make the term below. So you can see that carries on through all of them. Every term is the um, uh, the sum of the two, two terms that are directly above it. Now this is called Pascal's triangle. Now we can actually use um, a little formula to work out those numbers. Um, this notation here, n over r, it represents this, n factorial over r factorial n minus r factorial. Now if you haven't come across or don't remember the factorial sign, that is um, a multiple of every integer of that number and below. So for example, 6 factorial is 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Um, but you should have seen that before, hopefully. Okay, so that's the formula that we use. That's quite an important one, and it is on your formula sheet. So for this line here, that was where n equals 4. That was doing our power of 4. So the 1 you get by doing 4, 0, um, which uh, comes out to 1. The next one is a 4, 1, and then a 4, 2. If you put all of those into that formula that's in the red box, you'll get those numbers there, the 1, 4, 6, 4, 1. Now we can actually do this a little faster on your calculator by using the buttons NCR. So have a look on your calculator and see if you can find that. So you can uh, use those buttons um, and put in the, the 4 and the R value for each of those coefficients. Okay, so in general terms, how can we write this for any power? So we know that we're going to have something looking like this. Okay, so the coefficients they start with n0, um, now I'll talk about that as n choose 0, that's the, the c that um, is in was on that previous slide where it says ncr, so n choose 0, and then a to the n, b to the 0, the a starts at the n, the b starts at 0, and then they work opposite to each other, so a reduces in powers and b increases in powers. Now we can tidy this up just a little bit, the n choose 0, we don't bother writing, that is always 1, same as n choose n at the end. We also don't need anything to the power of zero, so we can blank out those ones as well. Um, and we, of course, wouldn't write to the power of one either. Okay, so tidying that up, we get the following. And this is how it looks on your formula sheet. So now let's have a practice of using it. It's actually much easier to use it than write it in general terms. So here we'll do it with x plus y to the power of five. So our first term is x to the 5. Then our x's are going to reduce by a power every time. Um, our second term, so you can see there that the x is now x to the 4. Uh, the y is y to the 1. We're going to introduce the y's and increase those powers now. And our coefficient is 5 choose 1. Next one will be 5 choose 2. x comes down 1, y goes up 1. Then 5 choose 3 x has come down 1 and y has gone up 1 and so on.
until you get your final term being your um, second term raised to the power of 5, so y to the 5. So if we tidy that up now, you can use the um, button on your calculator to work out those coefficients. So 5 over 1, you just type that in as 5, then that NCR button and 1. That gives you a 5. 5 choose 2 is 10, 5 choose 3 is 10, and 5 choose 4 is 5. Okay, so some examples. We're going to find the first three terms in the expansion in ascending powers of x of this. Now, quite often these questions come up just asking you for a certain set of terms, so like the first three or the first four terms or a particular term. Um, so let's have a look at this here. We've got a is 1 and b is minus x. Our first term is 1, second term is negative x. Make sure you include that negative there. Okay, so this is approximately equal to taking those uh, first few terms, so 1 to the 15, then 15 choose 1, 1 to the 14, minus x, 15 choose 2, uh, 1 to the 13, and the minus x squared. So that becomes 1 minus 15x plus 105x squared. Now the 2 minus 3x to the 10, that's approximately equal to 2 to the 10, 10 choose 1, 2 to the 9, minus 3x, 10 choose 2, 2 to the 8 times minus 3x squared. We're only looking for the first three, so we'll stop there. And then working out those numbers, we've got 1024 minus 15,360x and 103,680x squared. Okay, now you can be asked to take this one step further. Use part B to find an approximation to 1.97 to the 10. Okay, so 1.97, we want to make it the same as what we had in B. So this is the same as 2 minus 0 0.03, which is the same as 2 minus 3 times 0 0.01. Now you can see that is in the same form as the 2 minus 3x that we had, where x is 0 0.01. Okay, so now we can put it into our expansion. So we just need to take that um, expansion with that starts there in the green with the 1024 and put in our value of x which is 0 0.01. And then work out what that would be and we get 881 to 3 significant figures. Okay, example number two, this time we're being asked to pick out a particular term in the expansion. So we're looking for the coefficient of x cubed in the following expansion. Now you can expand that all out until you hit the x cubed term if you struggle with these ones, but it's a bit faster if you can jump straight to where the x cubed is. So to make the x cubed, we need the part that does this. So we need to have the 2x um, to the power of 3. Now if we've got 2x to the power of 3 that means that the first term is to the power of 7 because those terms always have to add up to 10 and it means that the coefficient is the 10 choose 3 part because that 3 um, you know the bottom of those that that column there is always matching the power of the second term. So now we can go straight to working out what that coefficient would be and we get our answer. Okay, another example, write down the first four terms in the expansion of this. So we've got to expand 1 plus x to the 5 and then multiply it by 1 minus x. So let's just do the expansion of uh, the power of 5 first and we'll take the first five terms. You should be getting used to doing these now hopefully. And then we're just going to tidy that up. And then multiply everything by 1 minus x. So to make things easier, I've just multiplied it by 1, and then I will multiply it by minus x. Okay, now we collect up the like terms. So we have a 1. The x's, we've got minus 6x. The x squareds, we've got 15 of those. The x cubeds, we've got minus 20. And we can stop there. We don't need to consider that x, fourth, x to the power of 4 at the end because we're only asked for the first four terms.